are people who call themselves into parties and they give names that I belong to group A, I belong to group B, I belong to group C, and every group says, I am the only group that will go to Jannah. All the others will go to hell. Group A comes and says, I am the only one which is on Quran Sunnah. All the other groups will go to hell. Group B comes and tells me, I am the only group that will go to Jannah. All the other group will go to hell. Group C also comes and tells me the same thing. What do we do? When such a group comes, you ask them three questions. Number one, that are you on the truth? And all the group, all the followers of all the group will say, yes, we are on the truth. No one will say we are not on the truth. Then the second question you ask them, that do you believe in truth? And all of them will say, yes, we believe in the truth. Group A will also say, group B will also say, group C will also say. Ask them the third question. Are you a masoom? Are you innocent? Are you sinless? And if someone says, yes, then you have to tell him, he is wrong. Only the messengers are masoom. No human being can be sinless or innocent. And if he says, no, I'm not a masoon, then that solves the problem. That means we can differ. As long as we want to be on the truth, as long as we believe we are in the truth, so what we have to do that when we find people differing, we have to call them to the truth by evidence from the Quran and Sunnah. From the evidence of Quran and Sunnah. Quote them the verse of the Quran and tell them this is what Allah says. Quote them the hadith and tell this is what the Prophet said. And if truly he says he's on the truth and he believes on the truth to any Muslim who says he wants to be on truth, when you show him the verse of the Quran and when you show him the hadith, authentic hadith, inshallah he will have to agree with it. There are few issues in which they can be hadiths which can have two meanings. Very few. Like the hadith in which the Prophet told the Sahabas that do not pray Asr until you reach Banu Quraida. Fine. But these are small issues. These issues, as long as you believe that you are on the truth. And when the reference of the Quran is shown to you, believe me, if every Muslim asks the other Muslim, Kul hatu burhanakum, produce your proof, in kundum sadiqeen, but if you're truthful, most of your problems will be solved. Now the references I gave from the Quran, I told you, chapter number, verse number, chapter number, verse number. When I quoted hadith, I gave you references. If someone is pulling a fast one, he will not give references. And you can check it up. Today is very easy to check, previously difficult. Now, you go on the internet and type, you will come to know whether the hadith is sahih or not. Very easy. Age of science and technology. It's very easy. It's very easy. Believe me, if we follow this, this key of kul hatu burhanakum, produce your proof, in kundum sadiqin, but if you're truthful, what we realize that almost all, or if not all, majority, more than 90%, of our differences will be solved. There will yet be 10% there, but that will not be the core things. That will not be core differences. Whether you put your knees first or your hand first, as long as you believe you are following in the messenger, and the hadith can be interpreted in two ways, inshallah Allah will accept your prayer. As long as you want to follow the Quran and the Sai hadith, most of the differences that are there, if, you, or if someone asks me any question, I ask him a simple thing. Where is it mentioned in the Quran? Show me. Which hadith says that? You show me, I will follow it. And I always told in my lecture from the time I'm lecturing, for mashallah more than 20 years, more than 25 years I'm lecturing, 
and has to always say that Quran and say Hadith, Quran and say Hadith. And we know that Quran, I can show you a book, Quran. When it comes to say Hadith, it's difficult. Where are the say Hadith? And the best reply we could give is, okay, follow the Qutub Sitta. Some people call it as Siya Sitta, which is the misnomer. Siya Sitta means six authentic books, which is the misnomer. The right word is Qutub Sitta. The six books, out of which Bukhari and Muslim, the first two are 100% authentic. The remaining four, most of it is authentic, but not all. That is Abu Dawud, Tirmidhi, Sunnah Nisai, and Ibn Majah. Some of the scholars even put Muatta Malik instead of Ibn Majah. But the scholars agree that if you read the six books of hadith, major, most of your fiqh and issues would be solved. So I have to always say, okay, now, Qutub Sitta, but again, voluminous. So with this in mind, mashallah, I met the head of the Medina University of Hadith Department, Dr. Ziyar Aman Azmi, and we came with a project about more than 15 years back. And after Sheikh Ziyar Aman Azmi retired, we came with a project of compiling all the Sahih Hadith together in one set of volume. And after 15 years, mashallah, he has just last year completed this project. And according to Sheikh Ziyar Aman Azmi, he says there are approximately 1 million Hadith that are there. 1 million Hadith. If you remove the duplicate hadith, it only turns out to be 60,000. For example, in Sahih Bukhari, there are 7,275 hadith. If you remove the duplicate hadith, it comes to 2,210 hadith. So even in Sahih Bukhari, the matter is the same, but the narrators are different, so it becomes two different hadith. Same thing with, with Sahih Muslim and the other books. So Dr. Ziyar Rahman asked me, according to him, there were approximately 1 million hadith, out of which, if you remove the duplicate, it comes to 60,000. And from the 60,000, approximately 13 to 15,000 hadith are sahih. So in a span of more than 15 years, mashallah, we got on with this project, and we had a group of scholars helping him. And it is compiled now in 12 volumes. It is called as Jamia as sahih Jamia Kamil. And all the Sahih Hadith have been compiled and with all the reasoning given that why is it Sahih, which scholar says it's Sahih, etc. And whichever Hadith today you quote, it will be there. It's a human work, so I cannot say 100% accurate. We can safely say that more than 95% chances, any Hadith you quote will be there. It will say this Hadith is there. And it is there in Bukhari, chapter number one, hadith number eight, or whatever it is. And it's also repeated in, in Sahih Muslim, etc. So now, this Jame Sahih Kamil, which in 12 volumes, has been made into a muktasar. That means the reasoning has been removed, and it is now coming f even in five volumes. And I told Dr. Ziyar Manazmi that make it into more smaller, and even just for the layman. For the Muslims, we may not be scholars, only give the matter of the hadith without even the sanad. So that it becomes easier. Now it is present in Arabic language. It is published by Darul Salam in Riyadh. And inshallah, very shortly, we will translate it into English, Urdu, and then Bangla, inshallah. So that when we say Quran and say hadith, we have the Quran, we also have the say hadith compiled, mashallah. This project, compiling the Sahih Hadith in one, one set of books, was the first time done in the Muslim Ummah. Many tried earlier, but didn't complete the project. And Dr. Zia Rahman Azmi has completed the project. It is printed last year. And inshallah, we intend translating it into different languages of the world. The Prophet said, it's mentioned in a Sahih Hadith, of Sunnah Abu Daud, volume number five, in the book of Sunnah, chapter number one, hadith number four, five, nine, five. The beloved Prophet Muhammad Sallam said that the Jews were divided into 71 or 72 sects. 
the Christians were divided into 71 or 72 sects. And my ummah, my community will be divided into 73 sects. The next hadith.